Okay, so let's have a look at the file structure that we get when we download something from the RD Textures homepage. So we're getting an ambient occlusion map, uh, which we can use to enhance the shadows maybe a little bit more later on if we are not completely satisfied. A bump map, uh, of course. We're also getting all maps in 4 and 8K, so we can choose if we really want to go uh, full resolution or maybe just a half resolution, maybe to save some, some RAM and uh, stuff like that, depending on your machine, of course. Um, then we're also getting a color map, we're getting a depth map, which we can use later on uh, for displacement, of course. Color map goes into the diffuse channel. Uh, then we have a glossy map, uh, which we can use, of course, in the specular channel. We're getting two different ones. Uh, we're getting a normal glossy one and a high glossy one, uh, really depending on how much we want to have those roots, in this case, want to have how much, how much light they pick up, uh, how much highlight they will get. Then it also comes with a normal map. Uh, if you may be working with Unity, uh, Unreal Engine, uh, Cry Engine, you name them, uh, you can use those maps, of course. And then we're also getting a roughness map in 4 and 8K, uh, which we can use in the glossiness channel or in the roughness channel, really depending on which render engine you're using. They're all called differently. Okay, so these are basically uh, the maps that we are getting, and I will show you now how to set them up correctly. Welcome to part two. And here, just simply want to set up in Cinema 4D uh, a basic lighting setup uh, that we can use uh, later on to see a little bit better uh, how the displacement works already. So I will just simply create a plane. Uh, fair enough, we don't really need more. We create an area light. So let's go area light and then we also create a null object. And we will bring this light here a little bit outwards, just something like this. Uh, bring it up, drop it into the null object. Let's maybe also turn it a little bit more down, maybe something like that. And rotate it here, something like this. And then we go now into the null object, into the coordinates. You can see that this light will perfectly turn around as soon as we rotate the null, which is pretty good, so we can uh, light up the displacement from all kind of angles and see a little bit better what's going on. All right. Okay, in part three, we will uh, look how to set this up in V-Ray. So first of all, we need to uh, bring in a light tag. So let's go V-Ray bridge tags, V-Ray light. And let's enable here the shadows and let's get rid of no decay because if we leave decay on this means uh, this light would shine uh, without any fall off through the scene as soon as we turn this off you can see we get this little circle here that indicates our fall off of the light which we can also change of course which I won't really do right now because I think this is just fine um, we can give this a little bit more samples, like right away. Let's maybe give it 64 samples, so we're getting a little bit of a better quality. And let's also set here the renderer to be rebridge. And we can enable GI. We don't really need to do this here for the scene. Um, but maybe we're getting a little bit of a better lighting out of this. So I will just simply do it. Uh, let's maybe take here brute force pass tracing medium from the presets and anti aliasing we can maybe leave here to uh, the type to progressive so we can see a little bit better what's going on. This is VRE 3.4, by the way. Uh, maximum subdivisions, we can all leave this here at standard for now. And let's maybe have a quick look how fast this scene renders. Yeah, should be fine. We should be ready to go. Okay, so this is the basic uh, setup for V-Ray and in the next part I will show you how to set up those textures finally. So let's set up the displacement texture. Um, first of all, make sure that you have 8 uh, intensity here so that you have set the intensity to 8 here in the light that it changes later on. And then let's go create V-Ray bridge displacement material. We can't do this in advanced material, so we need to set up this displacement material extra. Let's go to our textures and of course we need to use our depth map here. So let's load in our 8K depth map to get the best resolution and the best result. 
And as you can see, we can't see much here in the preview, so we need to up the amount here. So let's maybe go 10 centimeters. Of course, you can even go higher. I will just go with 10 centimeters here. Let's drop this onto our plane and let's make a little preview. And as you can see, already working pretty, pretty good. Uh, let's also make sure that you maybe have set here the V-Ray camera to pinhole if you're using a camera in the scene, otherwise you might get some strange results. Uh, that you might find yourself a little bit more zoomed in than you really are. This is just a common V-Ray problem. So make sure that the camera is set to pinhole when you're using a camera in the scene. So this was the basic displacement material and in the next part I will show you how to set up roughness and the specular maps. So in this chapter we will look at the glossiness map and the specular map that comes with RD textures. Um, so let's just simply create a V-Ray Bridge Advanced Material. And let's turn on here the specular layer. Let's drag and drop it onto our plane. And let's see the result. We should get 100% glossiness right now because we don't have loaded any maps yet. And always make sure that the advanced material is behind the displacement material. Otherwise, you will have an issue. Uh, as soon as the displacement material is here in second place, and we will try to render this, you will see that the advanced material will not be considered whatsoever. So we always need to make sure that this place material is in first place. This is an issue with all the V-Ray versions I've worked so far in Cinema 4D, so always make sure that this place material is here in the first place. Okay, so let's load our roughness map into the glossiness. Let's go roughness and drag and drop it here into the reflection glossiness. As you can see, this will already have here a little bit of an impact. We're still getting a lot of glossiness, of course. But that's just fine and let's load our root glossiness map we could also use the high glossiness i will just use the normal one and drop it here into our specular color as you can see this will change a lot we're only getting here a little bit of light and this is absolutely correct because this is a a root shot where you have a lot of soil going on a lot of uh, stems and stuff like that so there shouldn't really be much reflection whatsoever this was a dry day so it wasn't rainy or something like that so this is absolutely correct and yeah this is how you set up the glossiness map and the roughness map and yeah see you in the next part so in this part we will be using the bump map and the bump map will give us even further detail on what we already have so let's load the bump map in here let's use the 8k bump map turn on the bump channel here drag and drop it and let's maybe leave it for at one centimeter for now and let's see the difference as soon as we load the bump map really getting a lot more detail as you can see but it also starts to to look a little bit crazy i mean even when we're getting closer here we definitely can see how much this map really changes i think one centimeter might be a little bit of a high too high value um, here as you can see if we're really close up we can start to see how much detail this bump map really adds. But one centimeter just simply seems to be too high. So we have to change this down maybe to a value here of 0.1. So we still have enough detail, but it don't start to look so crazy. I think a value of something between 0.02 and 0.1 might be just fine for all the bump maps that come with RD textures. And, but this is really up to you how much you wanna play with this value. Um, like I said, I would be using 0.02 between 0.1. Uh, you can even go higher, really depending on the distance that you have with your camera to the map and so on. Uh, but a normal value, yeah, is the value that I just that I just said. Okay, catch you in the next part. So in this part, we can finally load our color map here into the diffuse channel. So let's just simply go textures. Bring this over here. And let's drop in the 8K color texture. So we finally can really see how our final image will look like. And this is what we get. Should look absolutely stunning. And it does. Really, really does. What we can do, the last map that we have here is the ambient occlusion map. We can use this ambient occlusion map, of course, as well. Um, for two different things. First of all, we can enhance the shadows with that and we can also get rid of a little bit of displacement issues that you get with every single displacement map that you will ever download, uh, no matter what. This is just how displacement works. At some point, you will just have some 
geometry issues when you're putting the value too high. Uh, but this is just how it is, so no problem with that. Um, but with the same occlusion map, we can even hide these problems a little bit more and get a little bit more rid of it. Uh, you will only start to see these problems anyway when you're getting a little bit more close up. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but I will show you quickly how you can do that. So let's just simply bring over the diffuse layer here, over those map and fusion, and let's load here into the blend channel an ambient occlusion map. Set this here to multiply, and then this blend value will decide how much we really use from this ambient occlusion map. If we leave this here at one hundred percent. This will give us full ambient occlusion, which can also look good, really depending on what kind of look you are after, of course. So let's see this. So as you can see, we're getting a lot more details here, a lot more shadows and stuff like that. So if we pull this down here to 0%, this means no enhancement from the ambient occlusion map whatsoever. And this is then how the shot looks now. So we're only getting the color map again. Yeah, just simply looks, I think it also looks good uh, without enhancement, really depending what you want to do and how much details you really want to hide or how much shadow you really want to have in the scene. So yeah, just simply use this ambient occlusion map for that. And the last thing that I want to show you, which uh, is a little trick that you can use for all the maps or at least for the black and white maps. So for the displacement map, for the ambient occlusion map, for the glossiness, for the bump and for the roughness map is if you don't really like, if you want to have, let's say, okay, we really want to create maybe something like a wet day or something like that, we can, of course, um, work on those maps a little bit further without adjusting them in Photoshop. We can just simply put here a colorizer over those maps and then get rid of this red dot by just simply clicking drag and drop, set this yellow value here to white. And then we can try to find here those white values in this map a little bit better, like this maybe. So as you can see here, the behavior already changes. And then we can type in here values. So let me show you this maybe here a little bit on the glossiness map, what we can do exactly here. So let's also put a colorizer over there. Let's maybe pull up here the black a little bit so we're getting here a little bit more the black values out. And what I can do now is just simply say, okay, everything where this map is black, so in this case, the stamps, uh, basically, that stick out here a little bit, I want to have a glossiness of 0.78. So 0.78 would be just simply here a value of 78% grayish. Okay, so this is now a glossiness value of 0.78. And everything where it's white in the map, I want to have a glossiness of 100%. Of course, you need to adjust here the specular color also a little bit um, to get the reflection a little bit more working because if this thing doesn't pick up any light whatsoever, it doesn't matter what glossiness it does have. But let's have a look at this map now. So with this method, you can easily, maybe if you really want to create maybe like a wet look of this whole map um, because you say, okay, I wanna have like maybe a rainy day shot or something like that. And this is an easy method how you can adjust those maps inside of V-Ray for Cinema 4D without having to adjust them maybe in a longer process inside of Photoshop. Okay, so this was it for V-Ray for Cinema 4D and thanks for listening. Bye-bye.